Hey everyone, welcome back. Yeah, um, we are back with another mobile related sessions. He's trying to compete with me. No, it's it's actually fun. <laughs> he's using Flutter. It's it's different. Um, but um, yeah, it's it, it looks like it's going to be interesting. It's real time mobile application um, using Firebase and Flutter, um, which is awesome because Flutter Flutter. Flutter is really nice. It took a different approach to mobile development, and and this okay. presentation is by Devansh Ramen. So let's let's just bring him in and let him talk a little bit about this. What do you think? Hey, Devansh, welcome. Hello, Hello Marine. Fine, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, thank you. Awesome. First time you're live on on YouTube. Think first. Yeah. What do you have to say? <laughs> uh, well, thank you for having me, and it's the first time I'm, I'm speaking at the DevCon, and, and I would like to thank the MSCC and everyone involved for organizing such a great event. Yeah, true. And the viewers, they, they make it, um, like the viewers and attendees, they make it worth it every time. Um, so, Devanj, why don't you just introduce yourself, tell us a bit about what you do and what what you're going to talk about before we move to the session action. Okay, uh, so I have a BSc in computer science from the University of Mauritius. I received my degree in 2014, and uh, since then I've been working as a software developer, which is now for around six years. Currently, I'm working as, at Checkout.com as a senior software engineer, where my main goal is to bring new and innovative product for Checkout and its client. And in my free time, I like to build apps, and which I publish a, a few on the Play Store and App Store. And some of them have above 10,000 downloads, uh, generating uh, thousands in uh, monthly income. I also have a blog where I like to write about programming and Android development. I've worked with various frameworks, uh, native Android, iOS, Ionic, Flutter, React, Angular, uh, Firebase, Node.js, .NET, but my main area of expertise is really uh, uh, mobile mobile app development. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's a very impressive. interesting portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So you were saying today today you have uh, to yeah, talk. Today we are uh, we are going to talk about how you can build a real time app and uh, what we'll try to do first we'll cover we'll have a quick overview on Firebase and Flutter. Then we'll have a live demo, live coding, where we'll build a, a virtual draw pad, which could, can be shared across uh, multiple devices, and it should be in real time. So that's uh, the, the target for today. This is, that's awesome. Yeah, this is <laughs> okay. interesting. And I want, I want the link or, or the name to your Play Store. I want to check things out. I already, I already went to your blog. I'm just going to say. <laughs> I'm on your blog right now. As soon as you said you have a blog, but <laughs> I need I need to check out. Yeah, it's it's fine. <laughs> you can uh, you can find uh, my Play Store. Just search my name uh, on Play Store. All right. Yeah. All right then. You it's know what? Good. Let's let's um get you on your session, and I'll check out your Play Store in the, <laughs> in the okay. meantime. Thank okay. you so much, Devan. Okay, um, thank you. All right. So I was discussing, we'll have a quick overview of Firebase and Flutter. We'll do some live coding with, uh, where we'll try to build a virtual draw pad. Then we'll look at the key features of uh, Firebase admin console. And uh, afterward, we have a Q&A sessions. So Firebase it will be used as our backend and Flutter will be used as our frontend. Firebase started as a project known as Envol which was a startup founded by James Templing and Andrew in 2011. The founders wanted to build a real time, a chat system which could be embedded into websites. Later, they found out, found out that uh, app developers were using the, their service to sync application data across devices. They eventually founded a new company, Firebase, which featured a real time uh, database. They added uh, multiple services on top of it, like user user authentication, and uh, was it, the Firebase was later acquired by Google in 2014. Google uh, integrated uh, all the Google services 
and move uh, the infrastructure to Google Cloud and also uh, made uh, allow things like push notification and user authentication, social network integration, uh, doing prediction, machine learning, and a lot of additional features. Firebase is uh, considered as a, as a bus, a backend as a service, which means uh, as a developer, you don't need to focus too much time on the infrastructure. And at the same time, you get a lot of services which are commonly used by mobile apps and uh, which are very useful. Um, you can have, uh, you can save a lot of time and uh, it, 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 also, uh, it also proposes a freemium model which uh, means that you don't have to pay anything if you're, you, don't have, uh, in a, you, you don't have a lot of users. Unless your, your app is very successful or it has an error, you basically don't need to, to pay with Firebase. And uh, that's a key advantage of, of using Firebase. And at the same time, of course, you, you get uh, less uh, control on, on what technology will use. You have to use what, uh, like a Firebase, Firestore, for your database, you won't be able to use any other technology like My MySQL. And on the other hand, uh, we will be using Flutter for our front end, which is a cross-platform open source UI toolkit. It was created by Google, and it can be used to build uh, Android, iOS, and now for desktop and web app using a single code base. And uh, it offers a very high performance uh, for a cross-platform solution, I think it's one of the best in terms of performance and, and, and in terms of what you can do with a UI. So Firebase, uh, sorry, Flutter uh, uses a dog virtual machine, which run directly on, on the Android uh, app or iOS app. And it, uh, under the hood, uh, Google has acquired um, a product known as uh, Skia, Google Skia, which renders the graphic on the dot virtual machine. So the, there's no bridging between your, your uh, Android app and your OS. Like in some frameworks, there's a web view or a bridge in between. So Flutter, it runs directly through the Google Skia and, and through a native platform. So it offers very high performance. It promises around 120, frame, 120 frames per second. And as a developer, you will be using a dot language uh, we, you have to understand the concept of widget and declarative programming. So, um, without further ado, let's let's see how it is to code uh, the virtual drawpad. So, we will not start from scratch. We will be starting with uh, an offline an offline drawpad, and I'm sharing with you two different phones. So I'm mirroring my, uh, my Android phones here, and I will be running the app. So again, due to time constraint, we'll, we'll start with a, a very basic app. And before, maybe I can just tell you, if you not, have not used Flutter, you, you will need to install the Flutter CLI and, and, and also the plugin on VS Code to be able to, to get started. But uh, you can find the link. You can easily find a link how to get started and uh, install it on macOS Windows uh, before that. So I've already done this. Uh, I won't go to too much detail be, uh, because it's fairly simple to, to install. Now, as you, can, as you can see, currently we have a draw screen, which uh, takes uh, a list of points, which has an array of points, okay? And uh, on pan update, it, uh, it will mean that when I'm drag clicking and dragging on the screen, it should uh, add the points, add uh, each individual points to uh, the array of points. Now on uh, pan end, which is when I release my uh, pointer, it will add a null point uh, because we want, uh, it will use it the pad uh, widget will use it to be able to uh, differentiate between uh, the next line, next draw, next drawing. For instance, here we are using a widget uh, pad which will take a list of points. And 
for now we'll just try to focus on this part we have to we have a list of points which we want to be able to save on a backend on a firebase and at the same time uh, at the same time uh, being able to synchronize the list across devices so that we we can see all the all the drawing appear on, on the next device so if you can see now uh, i'm drawing on one screen but it's not appearing on the next it won't appear because it's save uh, only on the app. Now, before we add Firebase, let's do a small exercise. We'll, we'll add a, a home screen where we'll have a grid view with uh, a list of uh, boards. List of boards, so which ha will have board 0 to 7. Just to get an idea of how you can uh, develop with Flutter. So we'll add a home screen. And uh, also, if you are using VS Code, please make sure to install the Flutter, Flutter snippet, awesome Flutter snippet, because it will allow you to generate, to, to use a code snippet and easily generate uh, goods. So yeah, it's a bit slow right now. One second review because I'm just checking this here. Okay, so we have uh, two different of two different two different widgets in Flutter. We have a state class widget and the stateful widgets. So if you have uh, updates on your UI, you have uh, you have to use the stateful widget if you have a dynamic UI. And I would say if you have a static UI which don't, doesn't have any uh, UI changes, you will use the stateless widget. So for the home screen, we'll just have a list of buttons and we won't do any changes to the UI at runtime. So we'll use the stateless widget. And then we'll type in the class name. We'll have to import the class. There's, uh, there's, there's two different imports of the Cupertino in, uh, material design library and the and sorry the Cupertino library and material design. The Cupertino is for the iOS uh, human uh, iOS guidelines UI guideline and material design is one provided by Google. So we'll use a material for this example. Now. What we want to do is first we'll uh, we'll uh, load our home screen instead of a draw screen and hit refresh. I mean, need to do something here. One six. Let's uh, run the app again. Let's wait a few seconds for the app to load, and maybe we can continue to do with our home screen. And what we'll need to do is have a grid view here. So we'll add grid view dot. Uh, we will have a static grid view, so we can use dot count. It's just it's a bit slow. And then uh, we can have two. Actually, we can have uh, depending on how in the grid view. If it will be dynamic, we'll use a builder. Else, we'll just here as an example, we use an account. And then we can see inside what we need to define. So 
this max discount. So we'll have two columns. We'll have two columns. That's why we have to to ask cross axis count. Children. Uh, we we'll have a this. Then we we'll generate we we'll generate uh, a list of a list of widget. Okay. I think I have to add the Google the JSON. One second, I'll just add. Uh, I'll just show you before we continue. I'll just show you how we can um, add uh, the Firebase because uh, we are getting servers because I already imported the library. So I will add this so we can build and run the app. So. To add the Firebase into the app, before we continue, we have to uh, first create the app on Firebase, and we presented with this screen in the project overview. We have to click on Add Project, Android Project. First, we have to enter the package name. We'll get the package name inside of Android App Folder, Builder Grader. And normally, this is the default package name. You'll have to update it. Nickname, it's up to you to add. So that's not uh, that's optional. Next, we have uh, SHA-1. This is uh, optional as, as well, but uh, it's highly recommend authenticating your app, and you will need it for various services like Google Sign-in, etc. For now, I won't add it because I'm, I'm just testing. I'm just doing a demo. Now, you have to download the Google.json file and save it in your app folder. Mm. So we'll store it here. Click on next. Uh, <clears throat> we add. We have to add the following uh, plugins and, and 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 dependencies. So inside of your build for the project level Android builder Gradle, you have to add the class name here. Class path. Then inside your app folder builder Gradle again, you have to add. You have to add it here. Already added the already added the plugin, but uh, please make sure you do so on your side as well. And then we just have to build and build the app. Uh, also, I forgot to mention here. Inside of pubspec.yaml, you have all the dependencies. I've already added the Firebase and Cloud Firestore because my connection is a bit slow, and to get it. You just have to go to on pub.dev, and you will find the, uh, the different packages which can be used with Firebase, uh, with Flutter. Sorry, so I have two packages I am using: so Cloud Firestore and Firebase. Cloud Firestore will be used for the database, and Firebase Core is required is required to 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 install Firebase. Next, uh, we'll, we'll have to build and run the app to check if all the integrations are correct. Click on Next. I will just... Let's put it completely. Let's build and run the app again.
well, we'll try to be a bit false. We'll add the grid view again, continue, the count. Then, as I said earlier, the, the column should be two. The column will have two. Then we'll have a list of. We'll have a list. We have a list. Uh, so we have container first. Very slow. I don't know why my Mac is very slow right now. So let's build and run. Still waiting for it to build. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll continue with uh, Firebase. We'll look at uh, what we'll be doing afterwards. So we'll look at the Firebase Firestore, where we'll be storing the list of points. And that's a Firebase admin console. You will see that there's uh, a lot of different features in the admin console, like you can send push notification, you can do things like analyze your, all your crash, you can do analytics, and there's a lot of different features in the analytics board, like uh, you can uh, track specific audiences, and uh, prediction is very nice tool. You can you can essentially use prediction to predict uh, we, uh, to predict users will be installing your app, and at the same time, uh, you can do things like uh, send a push notification to to those users. That's a very very interesting uh, feature from Firebase, and uh, of course you can do things like. Uh, Push notification in app messaging is nice also. So you can have a pop up dialog. For example, uh, when you will be sending uh, a notification to the users who will be installing your app, you can send a, a, a dialog to ask them for feedback. You can do remote configuration where you have a, you can do also some experiment. So, based on remote config, you can do some experiment. You have two different uh, UI and for a group of users. And then you will do some experiment and see uh, what UI is performing, uh, which UI is performing better, and uh, and things like this. You won't be able to see any prediction here because this is a new project. If I run it uh, in another project, you will be able to see maybe later on. I'm not sure why it's taking so much time to build. Let's continue. So what we'll have right now is a list of uh, of uh, a, a list of uh, boards. What we'll do is we'll have to add a text to it. And it's very sad that you can't see it right now, but we'll continue because we have a time limit here. So child will have a text. And in the text, we'll, uh, we'll want to have a board number. So we'll have board. And then we can get uh, the index here in this uh, lambda expression. So we'll just say the index. And then. Uh, Let's so hope it runs. Okay, it's running hopefully now. Okay. 
Yes. Yes. That's our home screen. Everything is dark because we did not set any color for the text. Textile color. We'll use a white color just to see the text. Okay, uh, we can see the text now, and uh, we'll center it. Uh, yes, we'll center the text. We can wrap a widget in our center, just to center the text. We'll uh, we'll make the font a bit bigger. So, font size. Let's put it twenty-two. Damn, it's so slow. Twenty-two, and then uh, maybe we can set a background color with all the tiles. We'll add a list of colors. Essentially, I, I think just to save time, just copy a list of colors here, and we'll set it in the background of a container. So we just use colors based on the index. Save. Okay, we have our tiles. Maybe we can just add a margin just to make it a bit more beautiful. And there we go. So we have uh, our list of board. Uh, it was quite false. And uh, now uh, we'll have to to navigate when we click on the board. We have to navigate on the draw screen. So what we'll do is essentially we'll add a gesture detector. Gesture detector. And on top, we can be on top navigator. The push material page builder context, and then we'll pass in the draw screen. Okay, we have to import. Sorry. Now, if we click on the board, it's open the, the draw pad, draw screen. Now, we have to do something else on the draw screen. We have to take in a, an argument for the board ID. What we'll do is we'll have to put a, we'll have to pass it through the constructor of the draw screen. We'll add a string, uh, board ID, and we can just do it fairly easily. As you will see, board ID. Board ID. And then on the home screen, we just post in the board ID from the index we have. Underscore index. Okay, one thing you will see what I've used underscore here, it means that the variable is private. And uh, if we don't use underscore, it's public. OK, now we should be able to post in the board ID also. What we'll have to do now is uh, we have already integrated uh, the Firebase plugin, the Firebase uh, library. What we we'll need to do now is, is create a class where we'll, uh, we'll be saving our, our, our data to Firebase. So we'll create a new folder first. 
let's call it API. And then I will call critical clause Firebase uh, API the dot. Okay, what we can do is just create the clause, call it uh, Firebase API. And uh, inside it, we'll need to save. We'll need to save. Uh, we'll need to save a Firebase. We'll need first to instantiate the Firebase Firestore and pass in the bold ID. So we'll pass it through the constructor Firebase Firestore and underscore DB final string bold ID, and we'll pass it through the uh, constructor. How to import it? We we'll need uh, a few methods. First method will be to uh, set the points. I, let's call it save points. Oh, set points is better. Set points. We we'll need a method to to get the points. This is not a, an optimized version. Let's save on the screen. So now let, let's see how we set the points. Okay, how we store the points. We store it in a list of in a list of uh, of map. So we'll just use this itself. This, uh, this point itself, we will be saving it. So we pass it in uh, in the argument here. Points, and we'll first try to to build this this method. So what we'll have to do is use the DB Firebase that uh, Firebase Store dot. We we'll create a collection, so we'll store the points in a collection of strokes, okay? And then the document ID with the document ID of the board. Okay, then we'll call uh, set, we'll call set, yeah, set, and then we'll pass in the points. So, here we have points. Good. Now we'll have to get the. Oh, sorry. Before that, let's 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 test this out. Let's test this, test this out here on pan n. We'll 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 save the points. So on pan n, we'll have to to call the first. Before that, we we'll have to initialize our Firebase API on init state. So we'll create uh, a Firebase API here. Firebase. API, let's call it API, and let's initialize it here. Firebase, 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 Store, dot instance, how to import it. And then we have to pass in uh, the board ID, so widget dot board ID. So when we are accessing this this uh, variable, we have to use widget dot. We we'll remove this and we have to import it. Okay, so we have our API. We just need to save it here. So underscore API dot. Set points, points. One thing though, we'll have to, we have to, we we'll need to have two variables, two lists, one of points and one of unsync points. Uh, so I'll have to, I'll have to change this. So instead of points, we'll have unsync point as well. And in the unsync, unsync points, we'll be using it, we'll be updating it uh, once we, once we uh, update the UI, once we draw on the UI, sorry, and uh, and also we'll have to add, we'll have to, we'll have to add another point here. Plus, we have to save it here. Then clear. 
Okay. Also, nothing else uh, for the points. We have to add all the NSYNC points. Why is it so slow? Now, just save it. That's for updating the points. Let's draw in the screen now and see what happens on the fire store. Guess an error, of course. And set points for school on the. Okay, we have to hot restart the app because it uh, uh, we have changed something in the initialize method. And uh, we'll have to do a hot restart to reload the full UI. So now while we are drawing, let's see if it's saved in the fire store. Yes, it is saving. So we have our board number, so it's saving in the fire store. Well, that's fine, that's great. Now, uh, what we'll need to do is to get the point which is saved directly from fire store instead of, instead of uh, from the list of points we have here. And let's do that by adding a, a first in the Firebase API, we'll add the method here. So we have two types of two, we can return a future or a stream. Or when we use a future is when we have to wait, we have to do something asynchronous, we have to wait before the response comes. And when we are getting data from the server, we have to wait a few seconds. So we have to use either the future. And, uh, but when we have multiple uh, data coming from the server, we'll use a stream. And if you use uh, Java, it's a bit similar to stream, uh, stream which you use for for reading a file. And uh, so here we'll have any update which we are pushing uh, to the points database. We'll be returning it through a snapshot and we'll return a stream of documents. Okay, so here we'll just uh, use the stream builder here, wrap uh, with a stream builder. And it will be a, a, a document snapshot, the return type, and stream will get it from the Firebase, from the API dot get points. Okay, now we have to do a, do a few things on the snapshot. We have to check if the snapshot is not equal to null, if, for example, we have an error, etc. And also, we'll check if the data is not null. So if it's not null, we'll uh, first clear the points. Then we'll look through the snapshot. We'll check if the point is equal to null just to add it as is. Null, we'll add it to the list of points. Let's just uh, add the points. So we have to add uh, a, a, a map, so a map of string and double. What we are getting from the Firebase and what we are saving is, is a map of a string, and then we'll get it as from the Firebase document x for y also. It's stored as a key y. So that should be good. And then for, for the update, 
and we won't need the set state because it will be refresh every anytime we, we push it to, to Firebase. Okay, so I think uh, that should be good. Just for the clear, I'm not already I've not done it yet. One thing I have to do is uh, I have to restart the app, and also for the next phone, I have to redo it. So this one. Let's wait one second till it's loaded in the next screen. Yes, we we'll just clear this. Let's wait a few seconds till it's built, building to the next phone. Okay. Um, should be good, but just have to wait a few seconds. I'm really sorry, guys, it's taking a lot of time to load. I think because uh, Skype is loaded for a few minutes, it should be good. So maybe just a quick recap how we build uh, the app. We just had we added the the library to use uh, Firebase, and then 
we manage a collection directly from the from the from the app and we do not have to go to firebase also one interesting thing you can have a firebase explorer uh, where you can uh, actually already see your documents from vs code and for instance our draw pad here we can already uh, see our firestore documents stored here so we don't need to go to firebase to manage it Okay, it should be good in a few seconds, hopefully. Yes. Is it about two? So we'll just type in hello world. As you can see, it's replicated on the next phone, which is uh, a different mobile device. And I think uh, we have been able to, to complete uh, our, our real-time app. And any changes on this side also should be reflected on the other device. And this is, means that we are going, doing it through Firebase, and it's re in real time. Of course, there's a lot of optimization you can do in terms of how you can sync the data, but you get the idea of how you can use stream and how you can uh, build real-time apps and how fast it is with Firebase. And uh, I would like to thank you for, for your attention. And I know it took a little bit uh, above the time limit, but uh, unfortunately, due to the slowness of, 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 of some building and uh, of, 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 of my Mac, this happened. And I hope uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Vidush. Hey, Devanj. <laughs> Hey, that that was a great session. Really interesting. It was. Uh, yeah, you you can Thanks. you can go ahead and and create one of those games now where um they have to draw something given the name of the item. You know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the social one. Yeah. You can do That's that a cool now. Game. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. <laughs> and even the audience I, also can 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 build it because it's not uh, that difficult. As you can see, yeah, with uh, Firebase mm -hmm. and Flutter, even the students can 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 try to have some fun with it and build some some fun fun app like that. And it's accessible to anyone. It's free as well to get yes. started. This kind of reminds me with uh, something that um, it's with distributed computing. I think Java or MI, where yes. um, we kind of developed something like that once. But this is much cooler. It's using, I mean, it's it's using Firebase. It's uh, it's truly real time. It's not limited to a LAN network. This is awesome. Um, okay, so this was a great session. I don't see any questions in the comments. Um, but you I do, do see, have a lot of fans. Yeah, exactly. I do see a <laughs> lot of fans. A lot of people okay. were like dabbing for you. Like okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, Thanks, so everyone um, do you want to leave any closing comments, any um, closing remarks before we, we end the session? Uh, well, I would just like to thank you for your attention and I hope you had a great session. And thank you again to MSSC, MSCC and, and you guys, everyone who, who organized this event. And see you again maybe next year. Yeah. Thank you for, for you being here and presenting. And thank you to the viewers. Stay active. We like you like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's conclude this session and um, let's uh, let's yes. prepare for the next one in ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Devanj. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.